Let's look at a couple of examples of solving quadratic equations and rational equations. Quadratic, like in example one, just means there's an exponent of two that appears within the expression. Rational means that we're gonna have a fraction of some kind. So for all the problems that appear in this lesson, the idea is that ultimately the equations are extremely easy to solve. So let's look at example one, where here I have x squared is equal to nine. In fact, this is so simple, you probably could even guess the answers are three, because if you square three, you get nine. But also if you square negative three, you get nine as well. So I just even know the solutions by looking at this equation. But if you want a strategy for solving this, you know, for solving x squared is equal to nine, what you can do to cancel a squared is take the square root of both sides. And when you do that, the square root of nine is three. And as we discussed in class, the square root of x squared, it's not technically x, it's actually the absolute value of x. But really what that means for us is, you can just put a plus or minus on the other side of your equation. So the way I see this is, I saw a squared, I'm thinking square root to cancel it, and I immediately just jump down to this step, where I have x on one side, three on the other, and I'll just put this plus or minus because there are in fact two solutions. So let's check out this idea in a more complicated version of this type of equation where, okay, I see there's a squared. I know if I apply the square root to this first piece, it'll cancel that squared in some way. The only difference is, well, now I got this two that's in the way, and also there's this minus four that is attached to the x. But here's the strategy. I wanna get this first piece by itself. And I'm gonna do that by subtracting two from both sides of the equation. So the only real difference is you might have to do a bit of setup work before you get to the stage of taking the square root. Anyway, if you subtract two, you get x minus four squared, and on the other side, you get 16. Since I now have something squared completely by itself, I can apply the square root to both sides of this equation. On the left, that means I'm left with, it's not just x this time, but it's everything in the parentheses x minus four. And on the other side, that's four, but technically I'm putting this plus or minus. It's this idea of jumping down to this last step by putting two solutions on the side. To get the final answer, to get x by itself, you can simply add four to both sides of your equations. Here you gotta be a little bit careful. I have x all by itself, but technically there's two solutions over here. I have four that I added to both sides, but I have plus or minus four left over. If you're confused by this, you can break it up into two parts. This is really saying you have four plus four, but also four minus four. One gives you eight, the other gives you zero. So we do get two solutions this time, but you just have to break it up into two separate equations to get your two answers. And that is it for example one. So now let's look at a couple of really simple rational equations. Again, this idea of rational just means like a fraction, something divided by something else. Uh, let's look at this one first over here. Again, this looks very complicated. We have quadratics in both the numerator and the denominator, and it is equal to one. The reason this equation becomes really simple is because I can multiply both sides by this denominator, and all it does is it moves that denominator to this side. We get one, multiplied by this denominator. I'm going to write the idea out carefully in this example, but once we see how it works, I don't think we'll need to do it again. So again, I said I'm multiplying both sides by x squared minus four, so I get x squared minus four, that's being multiplied to the left side, and I also get x squared minus four being multiplied to the right side. The left side was x squared minus three x plus two, divided by x squared minus four, and my other side was simply just one. If you'd like, you can even write it as one over one. The nice thing that happens is on the left, the denominator completely cancels and you're left with x squared minus three x plus two. And on the right, I don't have to write the denominator of one times one and one times x squared minus four is leaving me with x squared minus four. So really you could just jump from this step down to this one. 
you can just move this denominator right over here. So it changes from a fraction to a quadratic equation. But even better, I have an x squared on the left and also on the right. If you subtract x squared from both sides, it completely cancels and you get negative 3x plus 2 is equal to negative 4. So that's what I mean by this problem being really easy. Uh, in two steps, it changed to a very simple linear equation. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides and then divide both sides by negative 3. So I get negative 3x is equal to negative 6. I divide both sides by negative 3. And I get x is equal to positive 2. That is the solution to this equation. Let's try this again in our second example. But again, let's skip all this middle step here. I'm simply going to take this denominator. I'm going to multiply it right over here. That's the same thing as saying I'm multiplying both sides by x squared minus 3x plus 6. So here's my second step. I have the numerator, and on the other side I have 2 times the denominator, this thing. Now before I start adding or subtracting things from both sides, I do have to distribute that 2 to every single term. And what I end up with is the left side is still 2x squared plus x minus 2, but the right side is 2x squared minus 6x plus 12. Again, it still looks kind of complicated, but if you'll notice that there's a 2x squared on both sides, once you subtract it, it's no longer quadratic. And it, this thing, again, reduces to a very simple linear equation. x minus 2 is equal to negative 6x plus 12. So to solve this, I suppose I will add 6x to both sides. This gives me 7x minus 2 is equal to 12. I will then add 2 to both sides, and I end up with 7x is equal to 14. I'm going to get the same answer, I guess, but uh, after I divide both sides by 7, I also get to x is equal to 2. That is the solution to our second equation, and this is what looks like to solve a very basic rational equation.